Hello everybody, my name is Mrs Holmes and I'm here today to teach you about equivalent fractions. This is the second lesson in the series and the first lesson was brought to you by Mrs Lambert and I know that she set you a little task. I believe the task was something like this. She asked you to show a third with 15 items. She asked you to draw a shape to represent a third. She asked you to draw one third on a number line and she asked you to write a fraction that was the same as one third. Now, I decided it was only fair that I join in with this task. So I went around my house, as you must have done, to find some objects and I decided I would use some teddy bears as we had quite a few around the same size that have been collected over the years. And I lined them in a straight line and had a look at them and then thought, hmm, it's really tricky. How am I going to work out how many are in a third without having to try and count them in different groups and things like that? I then said, I know. Why don't I use the fraction one third to help me? Which means that it would be in three equal parts. So I put them into three groups. And I checked that they had the same number in each group. And this is what I ended up with. Yeah, they're really cute, aren't they? Very fluffy. So as you can see, they're lined up in three rows and they are my three equal parts. The first one, I thought, this is easy. There you go, there's my one third. But then I went, ah, not exactly what I was asked to do, is it? Because I was asked to use 15 items for a reason. Because I was trying to find another fraction that was the same as one third I could then write down. So I thought, I know. How about I use the total number of bears as my denominator? So it looked like this. So in my one third part that I'd already found, I now had five bears. So five out of 15, which is fraction called five fifteenths. I thought this sounds like I might have done the right thing. So then moved on to the next part which was to draw a shape to represent a third. I decided I would use a rectangle because that's easier. And here's my rectangle with the uh, yellow part showing the one third and then I drew an identical equal sized rectangle underneath but this time I divided it into 15 equal parts because that would be the same model as the bears. And as you can see, one third is exactly the same size as five fifteenths. Final task was to draw a number line, wasn't it? Now I find those so hard to do. I always have to measure them properly and make sure that they're equal to the parts. Third isn't too bad though. This was my third number line the three equal parts and then I had to draw another one underneath the 15th and this is what it looked like and again you can see that 5 15ths is exactly the same size as one third so therefore one third is equal to 5 15ths now we're going to move on to today's lesson and we are again going to be looking at fractions that are the same size but this time we're going to use um, liquid really to show our fractions. So later on, I'll be asking you to find yourself a container with straight sides that you can see through, um, something like a vase or a tall glass or something like that, plastic container, and then a big jug of water so that we can measure out by estimating our fractions. So you can, if you want to, pause the video now and go and grab those things ready for the session a bit later on. But if not, that's fine. We'll carry on and move on to the next part to show you what we're going to do. So let's look at um, a model of some different glasses here. What do you notice about these glasses? Hmm. We could count them. We could say, well, there's six of them, isn't there? What else can you see? What do you think about how they look? 
Are they all the same? Are any of them different? What's that? Yes, you're right. The three at the bottom are identical, aren't they? So if you think of those like our part whole, they are the whole and they are the same size. So if I was going to put some liquid in these top ones here, let's do that. There we go. How much liquid is in those? You don't know? No, I don't know either. You're right. Because they're not the same, are they? So we can't compare them. We can't see if they've got the same amount in or different. What we could do, though, is transfer them into the other container and see. And there you go. It actually had exactly the same amount in, even though in the original containers, they look really different, don't they? And if you filled them up further, those original containers, you wouldn't be able to estimate, would you? Apart from if it's full up, which would mean that they would have all the parts in there, it'd be really difficult to say how much, um, how many parts there would be if you were comparing the two glasses together, unless they're completely full. That's a really important point with fractions. You need to compare them with the whole of the same size, because then you can look at them divided into equal parts. And then that's when it works as far as comparing fractions. OK. Now let's move on to today's lesson. So we have a straight sided container here. So this is the thing that I, I'm talking about that you will need something like this uh, a bit later on and then a jug of water. But let's say we were trying to look at fifths. And then we said, let's say, where would one fifth be? Where do you think? Would it be near the top, near the bottom? What's that? I think it'd be less than half. Yeah, I agree with you, it'd be less than half. Would it be close to half, though? Hmm. Hmm. It's a difficult one, isn't it? Well, there you are. One fifth is actually quite near the bottom, really, isn't it? And if you think about it, that's because the whole would be divided into five equal parts, and that's just one of them. that four fifths? Would that be near the middle? You don't think so? Oh, OK. Um, what could we try and say then? Well, I think when we looked at one fifth, that was near the bottom. We're looking at four fifths. That's almost all of it. So that must be near the top, mustn't it? So let's have a look. There you are. There's four fifths. Just leaving the one fifth to go. We'd already seen one fifth, so we'd need to leave that amount in our hole to um, find four fifths. Then there's two fifths. Hmm. We know what one fifth is. We could find two fifths, couldn't we? It's less than half, but it's not um, too far less than half. Finally, three fifths. Now that's a lot more tricky. It's more than half, but you're having to try and measure more parts, aren't you? And there you are, there's three fifths with two parts left in our container. Excellent. Now we are going to do some measuring of our own. So hopefully you have already got your water jug and your straight sided container. But if you haven't, pause the video now and go and grab those things. Did you get it? Brilliant. Well, I've also got a jug. And in my jug, I have orange water, just because it makes it easier for you to see on the video. And I've also got a vase that I found in my cupboard. So we're working on thirds now. Can you use your jug of water to measure out one third. Now I just need to say, be really careful not to spill the water everywhere. Make sure mum or dad know that you've got water and maybe do it in somewhere like the kitchen 
where if some water went a little bit on the side, it wouldn't be too much of a big deal. We don't want you to get in trouble. So we're only doing our maths. OK, so if I pour this, I'm going to estimate as I go. I'm looking the whole time. In fact, I'll take the lid off because it makes it a little bit easier. I'm looking in, I'm thinking, oh, it needs to be in three equal parts, and I just need one of those. And I think it's going to be about there. That's my estimation. Now, to make things a little bit easier, I did get a ruler and I marked, I measured the whole vase and then I marked a third on it. So I need to put it inside and I need to have a little look. And if you can see, I've gone a little bit too far over a third. With a third, it's more like here. So Mrs. Holmes has got a little bit too generous there. Okay, so bearing that in mind, I need to be a little bit more cautious when I put some more in for two thirds, don't I? How did you do with your measuring of a third? Were you a little bit over, do you think? Were a little bit under? At the moment, we are just estimating, but I was just showing you how I find it quite difficult too to estimate when you're trying to compare the shape or size of something. Okay, I'm now going to have a go at two thirds. So, Pause the video if you want to and have a go first, or you can watch me and then have a go after and pause the video. I think it's going to be about there. Let's see if I do any better this time, hopefully. Pop that in. Down we go. Oh, really close. So the, it's just a little bit above about here this time. So a little bit above where I have marked with the water. So I was a bit better at my estimating that time, wasn't I? How did you do? Well done if you got close to estimating because it really isn't easy at all. Okay. So just make sure you put those to the side so you don't get them everywhere. And let's have a look at the next bit we want to see. Okay. We're now going to look at some other fractions that are the same in size as one third. Since we've just measured out one third, we know what that looks like in size in a water container, don't we? So eight twenty-fourths and three ninths are also the same size as one third. Can you see a pattern there? Can you notice anything as to why it might be? Have a little look might be easier to see on one than more than the other but I will tell you don't worry if you don't see the connection because next lesson is all about that okay here's our container again showing one third and then the other fractions are the same in size as one third Now we're going to look at one non-unit fraction, which is because it's more than one part of the whole, unit fraction being one third, one sixth, and so on. So five sixths is a non-unit. I'm sure you knew that, but I just wanted to recap. Um, and the same size fractions as five sixths is 50 sixtieths, 20 twenty fourths. That means that they are the same size part of the whole. We can see that quite clearly in this diagram, can't we? Again, can you think why that might be? What do you notice? Why do they represent the same part of the whole? Hmm. And here we have two number lines. One is vertical, it's going up and down, isn't it? The other is horizontal. Now, what you call different orientations, different directions. But that doesn't make any difference. You can see that one third on the number line, whether it's vertical or horizontal, is less than half, isn't it, um, along that number line. But those other fractions, the 8 24 and the third nine, three ninths, are the same size, so they are exactly the same point on the number line. They're not bigger, 
and they're not smaller. And just because they're shown as different fractions, what that means is that that part is cut into more parts than the one third. So in the same area, same size as one third, instead of being in one piece, 8 24th has eight pieces and 3 ninths has three pieces. And the whole for each of those, you can tell how many parts they would have for those two fractions because you use the denominator. So in 8 24th, that means there would be 24 pieces. Here is the number lines again. You can see that for these fractions, they're closer to one, aren't they? Because they're five parts out of the whole six parts and 50 parts out of the whole 60 parts and so on. So that shows you the difference between them on the number lines. OK, finally, just moving on to the language that we've used. Um, so just to recap then, before we move on to your task for today, these are all equivalent fractions. That means that they are the same part of the whole. We've talked all the way through about this, and the word we use for them is equivalent or equal in size. That's what we're trying to get across. So it means that they take up the same space. So let's have a little look now at your task and see if you can show me that you understand what we've covered so far. Finally, let's have a little look at this. Can you see the dots above um, at the top of the slide there? How many are there? A quick count? You got it? Yeah, there's 12, isn't there? Well done. And how many are circled? How many, what was that? Two, yes. So this could be seen as a fraction as two twelfths, couldn't it? How else could we then see that? What other fraction could we say that that was equivalent to? Hmm, it's quite hard, isn't it? Right, well, let's imagine that the circled group of two is one part. So if every two is one part, how many parts would there be in total? You got it? Six. Well done. So if the denominator is six, by having circled around two, that would be one part out of six. So either two twelfths or one sixth. Now look at the bottom one. Yep, how many parts can you count? Well done. Six, yes. So six could be your denominator with two. And what else could we have it as? Think back when we were measuring. What, what fraction were we using? That's right, one third. Well done. And here is your task for next time. So you might want to pause now and draw these or you can have a go at them on the screen and be ready for next time. I want you to find two equivalent fractions for each of these shapes. And I'll go through those with you in the next lesson. So thank you so much for listening. Look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.